Hi everyone, this is Mehmo Sheikh and in today's video I will start a new chapter which is Objects and Classes. And in this new chapter we will first start our discussion with the concept of constructors. Okay, so here I have listed down the points for constructors and uh, we will also see the characteristics of the constructor along with an example. Okay, so now let us start our discussion with the definition of a constructor. Okay, the constructor is a special kind of member function which is used to initialize the data members of a class automatically the moment when objects of class gets created okay so this constructor is a special kind of member function okay so it's also a member function and the purpose of this member function is to initialize the value to the data members of that class okay so we cannot initialize value to the data members of a class anywhere we want inside a class template okay so if i want to initialize some values to my data members uh, for example if i want to initialize a value of 10 to a data member a which is a equals to 10 or b equals to 20 like this if i want to initialize some values to my data members in my class template then i cannot initialize it anywhere i want okay so for doing that i should make use of the concept of constructor okay and it's a special kind of member function which allows the users to initialize the values to the data members of that class okay and this constructor gets automatically called whenever the object of that class gets created now the next point says it has got its name as constructor as it constructs the values of the class data members okay so why it has been called as a constructor because it constructs it assign or it helps the users to initialize some values to the data members of the class okay so that's why it has been called as a constructor okay now let us uh, see the characteristics of constructor okay so i hope you understood everything about constructor okay and now let us see the characteristics of constructor okay now the first point says a constructor has the same name as that of the class okay the, the name of the constructor and the name of your class should be exactly same Okay, you cannot create a constructor with a name other than the name you what you have given to your class. Okay, if you have created a class with a name as student, uh, then you have to create a constructor with the same name as student. Okay, so I hope you understood your, uh, both of your class name and the name of your constructor should same. Next point a constructor is declared in the public section of a class definition. Okay, so we guys have already discussed that we have access specifiers like public protected and private. Okay, and this constructor has to be declared inside the public section of the class definition. Next point. A constructor is invoked automatically as soon as the class object is created okay so as I have told you when I was explaining this definition so the moment when the object of that class gets created the constructor will automatically get called okay next point a constructor does not return any value so return type is not associated with its definition okay so whenever we create any function we start creating that function by mentioning the return type of that function like if i want to create a function with a name as display then i will start creating that function with the return type like void display int display okay or float display okay so now this int void and float these are the return value or return type which suggest which type of value your function is going to return Okay, all these things we used to do in terms of functions, but in the case of constructors, we are not allowed to prefix these constructors with any of the return type. Okay, so if I want to declare any constructor, then I just need to simply start the constructor with the name of the constructor. Okay, so it does not allow us to mention the return type. Okay, now the next point is the constructors are not inherited so we cannot inherit these constructors with other classes 
next point a constructor cannot be declared as virtual okay and we cannot declare any constructor as virtual okay so we, all these points are related to different concepts okay so when we move on to the next chapters then we will be discussing everything about this inheritance concept and virtual uh, virtual concept okay so so now in this context we just need to understand that constructors cannot be declared as a virtual now the last characteristic is constructors can be overloaded okay so we have already seen the concept of function overloading where we had discussed that we can create a function with the same name more than once we just need to pass different set of parameters and different types of parameters to that function okay exactly the same way how we have discussed the function overloading concept here also we can overload the constructors as well okay so here also if I want to declare the same constructor more than once in a class then I need to pass it different types of parameters and different set of parameters okay so uh, here constructors can also be overloaded okay so this is everything about constructors and the characteristics of constructors okay so I hope you understood the definition of constructors and all these various characteristics of constructors now let us move on to the next slide to see an example of constructors okay so here you can see I have started this example with the header files and then I have started the class definition okay I have given it a name as constructor demo and I have mentioned uh, two access specifiers which is private and public and inside the private access specifier I have declared the variables which are of integer type x and y and then as I have told you in my previous slide that constructors always needs to be declared inside the public access specifier okay so that's what I have done here so this is the constructor okay as you can see here the name of the constructor and the name of the class is same okay so that is the condition so you cannot create a constructor uh, other than the name of your class okay so both of your class name and constructor should same so here I have created a constructor and here you can see I have not mentioned the return type like void or integer something like that okay so uh, these constructors doesn't support return type and I have created this constructor to initialize the values to these data members as I have told you in the beginning of this video that uh, constructors are used to initialize the values to the data members of the class okay so these are the data members x and y and I have used this constructor to initialize the values to x and y okay then I have declared a function print data whose return type is void okay and then I have written the implementation of that print data function where I'm adding the values of both of these data members x and y and finally I have created a main function inside which I have created an object okay so here you can see I have created an object the moment when I create this object these values will get initialized okay so the moment when I create this object of type class then it immediately make a call to this constructor and once this constructor gets called it's automatically initialize these values to x and y okay so that's what we had seen in our earlier slide where I had told you that these constructors get automatically called the moment when I create the object of that class and then with the help of that object I'm calling the print data function which makes the sum of these two numbers and gives me the output okay so this is uh, everything about constructors an example of constructors okay so now let us execute this example okay so now here I have written down that same example okay now uh, you can see these are private and public access specifier and this is the constructor okay now here you can see I have written the print data function and with the help of the object I'm displaying the output okay so with the help of this object I'm initializing the values to these data members x and y and I'm calling the print data function okay so now let me just execute this okay so now you can see when I run this program you will see it's displaying me an output of 30 here you can see it's making the sum of 10 and 20 okay so now instead of initializing the values for x and y inside the constructor suppose 
I have initialized the value somewhere else. Let us say an example I, have, I will initialize the value of 10 inside the private access specifier. Now when I run this program it will give me an error saying that cannot initialize a class member here. Okay, So we cannot initialize the values to any of our data members anywhere we want in that class template okay so if i want to initialize some values to my data members then there is a way which is using constructors okay so i hope you have understood everything about uh, constructors features and our characteristics of constructors okay so we have tried to uh, discuss this concept of constructors uh, in complete detail by started started off with the definition of uh, constructor and then the characteristics of the constructor and we have tried to understand this concept with the help of an example okay so i hope you understood everything about constructors and that's all for this video if you like this video click on like button share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching